All right, everyone. We're going to be <clears throat> in chapter two of the book of Hebrews. And I want to say good morning to you. I am Cheryl Oliver. This is Just For My Soul Ministries. And our vision here is peace and purpose for the soul through truth, love, and relationship. And our mission is to love and serve everyone through biblical teaching, personal testimony, prayer, and mentoring for the glory of God. That is who we are, and that is what we do. We are a discipleship ministry. We are growing and following after him. And we invite you to come and grow and follow along after Jesus Christ with us. Okay? We're learning and growing. We just want to travel that journey with you. We are a discipleship ministry. To be his disciples, that is exactly what it means. Okay? Pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow after me. Luke, that chapter 9, verse 23. All right. So, let's jump right in on here, um, and God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. This is our Passover week. This is a time that we celebrate, recognize, give much honor to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In the midst of everything. Let's, let's keep the center focus, the center focus, and that is our Lord and our Savior. Okay. <laughs> so let's read, let's read, beautiful souls. Let's read. I'm reading from the New King James Version, although I've looked at this in several versions. Um, in the New King James Version, this chapter two, we'll probably go to about verse nine. We'll split it up this week and next week. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we've heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape it? How shall we escape, I'm sorry, if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first beginning to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard it? God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. Four, he has not put the world to come. He has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels. But one testified in a certain place saying, who is man that you're mindful of him? Or who is the son of man you take care of him? Who have made him a little lower than the angels? You've crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. You've put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that we put all in subjection under his feet. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now if we do not if we do not yet see all things put under him but we see Jesus who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God may taste death for everyone now we're going to stop right there woo we're going to stop right there so if you traveled with us through Hebrews chapter one, we're actually leaving um, in, the, in chapter one, a description of the deity and the profound position 
that God gave his son, Jesus Christ. I think we traveled through that in two weeks. Chapter one took us two weeks. Beautiful. Okay. It was a comparison to the son being exalted above the angels, who Christ is in all his glory, what he did for our sin. And so coming off the backdrop of the author of Hebrews establishing in chapter one, which starts out God. I love the way chapter one just starts out God. It starts with the father, okay? Um, gives this beautiful depiction and position of Jesus in comparison to the angels. And of course, his mighty works brings us into chapter two. So now I'm going to read again and we'll stop and explain a little bit. So chapter two, verse one, and that's why it says, therefore, because it's coming off the backdrop of a previous told and explanation story. Therefore, we must not give more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Therefore, I'm, let me read that again. Therefore, we must give, excuse me this morning, these glasses <laughs> need to be doing a job. We must give a more earnest heed to the things we have heard. Okay. In my studies and I love looking at the, the various um, authors as I, I meditate on scripture. <laughs> right here, I'm stopping because the, the story of Christ, as we're going to tell it and study it and see it in the book of Hebrews, if we're not careful as his children, as a body, it gets lost even in church today. For many reasons, different focuses, different motives, um, man hearing what he wants to hear, but the story of the downright, beautiful, unhindered gospel of Jesus Christ, if we're not careful throughout the generations, it gets lost. It gets lost. Even in our festivities this week, as we focus in on the resurrection, um, yes, I'm going to do a little Easter egg hunt with the money and the candy if it don't rain on us here in Texas. But I always establish them little ones. I don't get the regular Easter baskets. I get the one with, you know, stuff about Jesus written on it. And I put them books in there and we'll stop and say, this is why we do this. This is who Jesus is. Don't ever let the story get lost. We're still talking about today's text. Um, in, in mentoring and biblical counseling and the people I talk to, I'll tell them with young ones, check in. Check in spiritually, check in socially, check in physically, check in mentally, check in emotionally. But when you check in spiritually, it's taking our children to church is not giving them Christ. Check in at points and ages with your little ones. Tell me what you understand about Jesus, because that's the only way you know they know. Explain it to me. Who is he? What did he do? Okay. Explain the Father to me. Who's, who's, the, who's Jesus' Father? Explain the Holy Spirit to me. And that way you check in as a parent where you can make sure that that foundation in their soul is solid. How does the Holy Spirit work? How do you know he's working inside of you? Okay. See where they're at. But don't think taking them to a building is saving their soul or is proper discipleship. That's our job as mamas and daddies. So check in with the little ones. And back to our text, because it has to do with that too. Therefore, we must give the most earnest heed to the things we've heard. And that is the gospel story of Jesus Christ and who he is. Okay. All that we kind of explained in chapter one, least we drift away. 
even today, least we drift away. Oh, mama, church was fun. What you learned today. Okay. Is the Holy Spirit convicting you of you going to school, cutting up? That's not how Jesus would have you to act. You are his example. You are his ambassador. Because you love him, you're not even from this world. We have to teach that or lest that gospel uh, discipleship and duplication of the kingdom of God drifts away. Because they're so busy with, we cannot let our little ones get lost to the distractions of this world. Video games, having fun, activities. You're in more activities than we spend 15 minutes doing Bible study. They will drift away. We will drift away. Same problem was happening at this time in the text. Therefore, we must give the most earnest heed to the things we've heard least. We drift away. Verse 2. For if the word spoken through angels proves steadfast, okay? And that could be a slight reference to the Old Testament. And every transgression and disobedience receive a just reward. Think about that. And every transgression and obedience receive a just reward. Because there's only two. Salvation or judgment for all transgressions and all disobedience. There's only two options, salvation or judgment, final judgment. So if it received, it's just reward. And that means we just, you just out of here. Condemn the just reward for transgressions. If I lost my space. Yeah, and every transgression and disobedience received its just reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? If every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, if you got what we deserve, if we got exactly what we deserve, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great a salvation. And the author described it in chapter one. Go back and read it again. So great a salvation through Jesus Christ. which. At the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard it. Okay. So he said, don't drift away. Don't miss this great salvation. Because the only other option is for disobedience and transgression to get exactly with the father who runs the entire kingdom in the palm of his hands, said it would get. The wages of sin is death. Oh, but Jesus, just Jesus, who came to give us the choice. He, came, he satisfied his father's decree. The wages of sin is death. All right. Okay. God the Father, but God the Son said, I'll go. I'll pay that wage. I'll ransom their souls. Thank you, Lord. Because if not, we would have gotten a just reward for sin. That's me and each and every one of us. Okay? So, verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard it. Okay? 
Verse four, God is bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Okay, so now it shifts. It's going to show us something else Christ did for us. Verse five, for he, for he has not put the world to come, which we speak, in subjection to angels. This was the same tone in chapter one. Okay. God said to which of the angels that I call my son and say in whom I'm well pleased. Not one. What angel sits on the right hand of, of the right side of the father? Because he sat down. Jesus Christ, because it is finished. I've gone. I've died. I've saved their souls. I did exactly what you sent me to do, Father. Now he's sitting at the right side of the Father. Not one angel sits. We learned in chapter one, they are ministering spirits, waiting, hearkening for the word to go out so they can go to work on our behalf. We learned that in chapter one. Okay. So this verse five is reminding us, for he has not put the world to come for which we speak in subjection to angels, because his son took care of it. But one testifies in a certain place saying, okay, going back, going to go back. But one testifies in a certain place saying, which was in the book of Psalms, a certain place saying, what is man that you are mindful of him? The angels would ask God, what is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you care for him? They see how God cares for us and wants to benefit us and wants to see over us and send his son to die for us. The angels are like, what is this? What are, what are, you, what are you doing? Why, why are you so mindful of him? Why do you love him so much? He has made man a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. That was Adam's original position over the works of the hands of God. And have put all things in subjection under his feet. We don't clearly see that position. Excuse me, of all things being under human of man's feet because of sin. Because of sin. The position God gave Adam, Adam lost. Why? Because he disobeyed. In your Bible, my Bible, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, read the story. He gave him dominion over all things, crowned him with glory and honor. Okay, this earth, you go name it. This is yours. Kings can do that. Kings can give them subject, their subjects rule over certain territories. He said, Adam, man, this is y'all's. Name the animals, take care of it. Everything that's in it belongs to you. We don't see our exact dominion. Because we fail, we committed sin, we went against kingdom rule. Thus, that's why we needed Jesus Christ. Because through him, we gained that position back. Okay, And also through him, when all of it's said and done, we're going to see things go back in that position. Okay? You have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that, he put all things in subjection under his feet. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not see yet all things put under him because of sin, which I just explained. Verse 9, but, but, but we see Jesus. I love that. 
but we see Jesus who has who was made a little lower than the angels. Now, what that means is that several reference scriptures in the Bible. Oh my God, John chapter 17, 1 Peter, a couple in the Old Testament, where it says that he was crucified before the foundations of the world. Okay, He was with us. God saw fit to do this actually before it even happened on our behalf. Okay. Slain before the foundations of the world. Then he had to lose his glorious position with the father. He lost that and was made to become man. That he may fulfill what we're going to see, what we're going to celebrate this weekend. He walked out. He left the throne. <laughs> he left heaven, made lower than the angels in the form of man so that he can satisfy the decree of sin, deserving death. I'm going to do that for him. So we see him not in his full glory, but as man. So we see Jesus, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels because he had to do a job. For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, because that's the only way he could get done what he had to get done, the grace of his father, might taste death for everyone. That's what I just explained. That's what the word is saying right there. Verse 9. So he was made a little lower than the angels. He had to take on human flesh. He had to leave the position and comforts of heaven. And he had to take on death. Yes. Taste it. For who? For me and you. For me and you. Going back to verse 6. When the angels said, what is man that you're so mindful of? Because the angels don't understand why God do what he does for us. They don't understand why. Now, they worship, they minister, they hearken to his word. But it's a, we are a wonder to them. They serve. They sing and worship all day. They do his heavenly bidding. They go after his will. They serve us. They are not to be worshipped. Only God, Jesus is to be worshipped. But the angels are heavenly beings. And they was like, who is man that you're so mindful of him? Or the son of man that you take care of him? You've made him a little lower than the angels, crowned him with glory and honor. Set him over the works of your hand. That was the dominion he gave Adam. And put all things subjection to his feet. Huh. Yeah. But we don't see it all now. As it says in verse 8. Verse 9. But we see Jesus. I love that. But we see Jesus. Who was made a little. And see we see Jesus. And we see that he, he was made a little lower than the angels. And he had to suffer death through. Uh, suffer death uh, crowned with glory and honor and by the grace of God that he tasted death for everyone because things will be and through his death in that position of subject under our feet because sin was dealt with. Sin was dealt with. Catch the beauty in this scripture and my human ability to explain it. Catch the beauty in the scripture. So as we prepare and celebrate this weekend, this Passover season, if you are, are checking out a Hebrew calendar, this Passover season, this, this Resurrection Sunday in which we identify and mark as 
the time we acknowledge publicly all over the world. Of course, we're grateful for it every day. Verse 9 brings it to great remembrance that he tasted death for everyone. And he didn't have to. He didn't have to. That's love. And he doesn't force us to believe it. He doesn't even force us to have faith in it. Everybody has a choice whether you want to follow him, learn of him, and fall in love with his goodness. Everybody has the choice. Who would want to be made to know and love somebody? That's not love. That's bondage. Okay? That's not love. That's bondage. He's not going to force anybody to go to heaven. We choose while we're on earth if we're going to be with him in eternity. So we fail to believe in him, his love, his death that he died for us. He says, okay. You've decided your destination. If you don't want to receive my love, acknowledge who I am. And receive my son, because you don't want to believe that. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to force you to believe in me, and I'm not going to force you to spend eternity in heaven. But one thing, mankind, we will not get around is making a choice that he gives us to do freely. So, my brothers and sisters in Christ, We are not to force anybody to believe, manipulate anybody to believe, threaten anybody to believe. You are to share the gospel and love people for who they are. They have to make a choice down, guilt anybody into believing. The word said, the word said, when they fall in love with Jesus, that Holy Spirit fills them that Holy Spirit will cause them to live right. We don't have to give people the do's and don'ts of the word of God. The Holy Spirit does that. Our job is to share the gospel, love and respect mankind, live the gospel, and share the gospel. Okay? In my, at my job, we had a little icebreaker, and it was like, what is your greatest legacy? And you go around the room, what would you want to leave? Very profound question. And, of course, when they got across to yours truly, um, and I said, I would want people to say, through her, I knew Christ. Through her. I felt Christ when she hugged me. I heard Christ when she spoke to me. His love, rather. Um, When she counseled, when she laughed, when she advised, when she worked, when she prayed. I felt his love. Greatest legacy. Greatest legacy. If I don't leave my children a dime, okay? If I don't leave them one dime, I want to leave them Jesus. If I don't acquire treasures, I want to be remembered as the one who changed trajectories of folks' souls. Meaning, gave them something eternal instead of something material. Yeah. We are his ambassadors. We are his witnesses. In everything we do, everywhere we go, everything we say, did they see Jesus or did they see us? Okay? That's that's a spiritual legacy. It's not fancy. It's not what the world would want you to leave, but it sure is what I want written in heaven. Sure is what I want written in heaven. All right. So God bless each and every one of you today. Father, we thank you. We love you. 
we celebrate and we recognize the most profound holiday, the most profound recognition in anything else we do. Yes, we're so glad you was born. But Lord, we are so glad you died to fulfill the decree from the king that the wages of sin deserve death. Thank you for standing in our place. Thank you for loving us so. Thank you for giving us back power and authority. Thank you for freeing our minds and liberating our hearts. Thank you for caring more than we would ever care about ourselves. Thank you for teaching us how to put the flesh under subjection. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Thank you. Teach us to abide and not be bipolar believers in and out of authority. Not getting anything accomplished because we want to live half right and live half wrong. Father, we are all in. We're all in. So God, we thank you. God, we honor you. Father, we need you in the sweet and most powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you are wondering about this thing, salvation, you are feeling a disturbance in your heart. It's God, that's what I need. I don't, I don't know. I don't feel or understand. You, you feel that guilt or conviction of sin, but you know he is the answer. That's a call to salvation. Okay. Believing in your heart that he paid that price for you because he loved you. That's all you need. Now, once you, I'm going to pray with you. And if you receive him as your Lord and Savior, then you must grow in faith. It's not all or none. It's not, oh, I'm saved. Now I can go live like I want to. Uh-uh. That salvation wants to work its way through your mind, your heart, your soul. And it wants to be evident in your life that God is so others will want to be saved. So no bipolar living just because you prayed this prayer. It's a process of being set apart to show somebody else hope through your life and your love and your walk. So if that's you, and you're ready to allow your father to transform your heart, your mind, and your life because you believed in his son. Repeat after me. Father God, here I am. Your creation, your son, your daughter. And I say thank you for loving me. I know I can. Yes. No, I have not been living, thinking, acting, or talking right. Definitely not in a manner that would glorify you and honor and give you reverence and respect. I've been doing this thing on my own. Selfish, prideful, and rebellious. Being my own God. So, Father, I repent. Ain't no time I don't apologize. I repent. I want to turn and go a different way. I repent. I was wrong, Father. And I receive your son's gift of salvation with all my heart, with all my mind, the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you. And Father, now I surrender that you may fill me with your Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One God, three roles. Just like I'm one person, I got a whole bunch of roles. Mama, wife, nurse, pastor. Okay. One God, three roles, Father, Son, and Spirit. They did three functions, three different functions. So we are praying to the Father, receiving the gift of salvation from the Son, and surrendering and asking him to fill us with his Spirit. Fill us with your spirit.
and I surrender my life to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you repeat it after me and you believe that with all of your heart, you are saved. But now you have to grow in your faith. You got to work out your soul salvation and it's going to be work. Soul work just for my ministry, just for my soul ministries. I said, soul work is work. Transforming your mind, you're going to have to work it out. You got to get in your word. Got to tussle with yourself. Flesh die, spirit live. Flesh die, spirit live. Jesus said, deny yourself and pick up your cross. How often? Daily. And follow after me. Okay? Salvation is free. You cannot earn it. You ask for it, you receive it. It's a free gift. But now you work that salvation out. And we're here to help you. So, good morning, Chauncey. Good morning. Good morning. Valerie, Kiana, Rose, Attorney Fullerton, Linda. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, thank you, Lord. Fall in love with him. That's right. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Come on in here, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, so that is wrapped up. Oh, my gosh. Let me share some information. Those of you who may have just come to Christ for the first time in your life, let me share some information with you. Those of you who know and believe, uh, let, let's pull up these announcements, y'all, so we can get on about our, our day. Uh, oh, child, where is it? There we go. Let me go back to the beginning. Hold on now. So if you are uh, one of the individuals that just decided yes today, and you are looking for more information, how to grow in your faith, maybe even a church home or, or an opportunity to be baptized, here's our email, our phone number, our website. Um, if you're on social media right now, you can direct message us through Messenger. We are on YouTube, my brothers and sisters. You just type in Just For My Soul and Cheryl. And of course, Just For My Soul Ministries will pop up. Facebook, Instagram. I want to thank you for your donations, you all. We are in the midst of not only um, um, our, our fifth year anniversary, but recent donations. We will be compiling them together for the tornado. We, we personally know two victims that live in Arkansas a dear contributor and supporter of this ministries, both of her adult daughters lost their home, their belongings, their shelter. They did have family members that they could go and stay with. But of course, you're talking about two adults, one with children. We are so glad that their lives were spared at this time. And so our supporter um, of just, just for my soul is headed out of town to um, render aid to her family. Um, I'm always blessed and honored when we can know individuals personally that, that's, you know, something may have happened, whether it's a house that burnt down or, or um, hurricane or tornado victim, that we can help them directly, that we can help them directly. We know exactly what's going. So I'm asking you to give. Yes, I am. Um, I don't know, personally don't know the feeling of everything being gone. I don't know that feeling. Don't know if I'll ever experience it, but some have. And I just want to thank you because we have come through before JMS. We have come through before, um, right about a year ago, a uh, young lady's house burnt down and she was getting ready for school, school clothes, school supplies, everything. And y'all showed up with materials. You showed up financially. Um, when we give to um, our, our different food drop-off, our soul food drop-offs, 
be it with the Houston Food Bank, Clear Lake AME Church, um, Open Doors Missions, where we give socks, shirts, shoes, suits, underwear to uh, that's a men's transition home, um, snack bags and foods for the elderly. Matter of fact, a couple of weekends, I just made another big drop off for us um, to um, Clear Lake AME in Clear Lake. And I'm going to start taking pictures. I got to do better taking pictures and showing you guys. So thank you. Thank you. We've had an influx of biblical counseling needs, and I'm able to reach down and pull people out, biblical resources, and put it in their hands at the moment for what they need because of your donations. So thank you. On the screen, you see the Cash App. You see our PayPal. If those of you, many of you got my cell phone number, Zelle, um, all of it, every cent of it goes back to kingdom work. And we just ministered as a ministry to a family that lost a loved one. We were able to um, love on two separate members of that family in very special ways. So this work is not done without the kindness of your love and support. So thank you for your sweet donations. Opportunities to grow in Christ on your screen, prayer moments, which you attend right now on Wednesday mornings, 5.30 a.m., Facebook Live, and then again tonight at 8 p.m. If you are available, put your speakerphone on or put your earbuds in, pop us on at 8 o'clock, conference call only at 8 o'clock tonight. Um, we're not on Facebook at 8 p.m., conference call only. So Wednesdays is our prayer moments, our soul teaching sessions on second Saturdays, 9.30 a.m. And of course, this month, this coming Saturday, we will be in person. And guys, I've been practicing. I'm going to try and scream live as well. I am AV for just for my soul. I am technology. I am production. I am everything. <laughs> so I think I got it all hooked up. So this coming Saturday morning, 9.30 a.m., you'll be able to join the celebration and the lesson Facebook Live. And also, um, of course, we'd love to see your face. These are two opportunities you have to grow in your relationship with Christ Jesus. So just come on and grow in Jesus Christ with us. Making disciples making disciples. And then, of course, last but not least, our flyer publicizing our event. And that's going to be at 218 Promenade Way, Sugarland, Texas, 77479 at Hampton Inn Suites. 218 Promenade Way, Sugarland, Texas, 77479. So I hope to see you there. We're going to celebrate a little bit. We're going to study a whole little bit. We're going to study a whole lot. It's going to be a good study too. Gosh, it's been blessing my soul already. So to God be all the glory. I want you all to have a magnificent rest of your week. Let the joy of the Lord rest on you. Matters not your circumstances or your situation. Let not one circumstance or situation, I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. You get still, get your word, some anointed music, get your soul still, and let the joy of the Lord fill you despite circumstances. He is eternal. Those are temporary. They're changing. Don't let them steal your joy. You might not be happy. I, I'm not, heck, I'm not happy every day. I'm not. But the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, is ours to have, to keep, and to hold. 
Yeah. And to train ourselves to do that is powerful. Let nothing and let no one take your joy. This weekend, walk in it. Because we acknowledge around the world his resurrection with all power, with all authority, and that's extended to you and me. So to God be all the glory, and as always, I need you to remember, God is true, the lover of your soul. Bye-bye for now.